Hello everyone, Ace here, and today let's talk about the latest would-be assassin of Donald Trump, who fortunately also failed in his attempt. Normally that would be the end of it, because normally at this point, social media would be scrubbing his online presence before people could actually get a good look at it. That, however, was not the case this time, and instead people were able to record both his Facebook and Twitter profiles, allowing for some curious insights with regards to his political beliefs, as well as his activism leading up to this second assassination attempt. For a start, I should mention above all that this man was absolutely obsessed with the war in Ukraine, and spent months on end trying to get thousands of people from Afghanistan over to Ukraine to fight as mercenaries, claiming most curiously that he had passports to send them over with. This is significant because assuming that this is actual factual information and not the ravings of a lunatic, which to be fair, both is certainly a possibility at this stage, then that would strongly suggest that he has ties to government agencies that could produce thousands of passports on a whim. It's also worth noting that the Ukrainians apparently shot down this idea, which implies that the Ukrainian government somehow had contacts with this man, at which point he then began to try to send these thousands of Afghans to Haiti as law enforcement, again using the passports to do so. I should mention that his behavior on Twitter at least does resemble more a bot than an actual human being, but considering that this is a man that tried to assassinate a former US president, I suppose we shouldn't be surprised that his interactions with the general public weren't exactly normal. Speaking of which, it is of note that in the aftermath of the first assassination attempt against Donald Trump, this latest assassin did repeatedly suggest to the the Biden and Harris campaign to visit the families and victims of that last attempt on the grounds that it's something that Donald Trump would never do in his eyes. Claims that have aged extremely well as I'm sure we can all agree. But perhaps one of the most interesting quotes from this individual was this one from April 22nd of this year, where he tweeted, quote, at POTUS, your campaign should be called something like K-A-D-A-F, keep America democratic and free. Trump's should be Massa. Make American slaves again, master. Democracy is on the ballot, and we cannot lose. We cannot afford to fail. The world is counting on us to show the way. In other words, this latest would-be assassin of Donald Trump is here openly spouting the democracy is on the ballot rhetoric typically heard from fear mongers who are hired by mainstream news media and who show very clear bias towards the Biden-Harris campaign. The Biden-Harris campaign that for the record, even after it was officially declared to be an assassination attempt, refused to actually call it that, and instead referred to the incident as a quote, possible assassination attempt. And again, I do need to stress that they made the statement after it had been officially declared to be an assassination attempt. I should also mention that this person was interviewed at least once in Ukraine a few years prior, and that footage has also been widely circulated as well, along with further possible footage of him in Washington DC, though that footage is unconfirmed at this time, and I will be providing links to that as well as the sources that I've already used in this video, so you can check them out for yourself if you should so desire. But ultimately, I believe that the information that was successfully preserved by the internet before social media companies were able to take down the profiles do indeed provide a fair amount of evidence towards the political leanings of this would-be assassin in the months leading up to this latest attempt against Donald Trump. It is a very good thing that people were able to record this information before it became completely destroyed. The fact that there is evidence to suggest that this man may have had ties to the US government, what with him apparently having thousands of passports just to throw around and give to people to go fight, as well as just so happening to receive a full interview during his time in Ukraine, despite the fact that there were literally thousands of foreign volunteers fighting for the Ukrainian military at the time, well that is potential evidence that yes, the man may have had some ties, and if that's the case, then this recent attempt should most certainly perhaps be looked far more into, especially with regards to 
any government agencies he may have had contact with in the lead up to this latest attempt. Once again, excellent work to those who were able to record this information before it was lost forever. And also, once again, I will of course be providing links in the description below to the sources that I have used, so you can check them out for yourself if you should so desire. But in any case, this has been Ace. Hope to see you guys again soon. Take care. Ace out.